Now, Lonnie, Lane Ball, I've got Colonel Clark McMahon from north here, and Lane Ball down in the south is on. And, Lane, what Lonnie from Brookhaven is saying is that when he called the game and fish, they didn't know anything about what, Lonnie, so Lane can hear it once again. We couldn't get anything from them at all on what was legal, what wasn't legal, what was going to happen, what we needed to do. We couldn't get anything from nobody. From the game. On, on what? In reference to what? On turning the dogs out and running dogs around the national forest in the southern part of Frank, uh, uh, southern part of the national forest. Now, now when did when did you call? Uh, probably five or six times during dog season. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know where you call now. Of course, we, we, you know, we passed that law. The commission passed that public notice, and it was widely publicized, not only in the papers, but on our website. The entire law was listed on the website, and, you know, I'm in the office in Magnolia, along with a, a lot of officers that work in the southwest corner, and we answered hundreds of phone calls. We actually met with the Mississippi Dog Hunters Association on two different times explaining everything. Uh, we, you know, I mean, I, I hate you didn't uh, get in on it, but, but, I mean, we went to great efforts to well, explain that before it was, before the season ever got here. Papers. Every day. I and beg your pardon? I don't necessarily read every word that's in that paper. But what paper? have to do with hunting, I normally see it. And I did not see it in the Lincoln County paper. Well, uh, sir, I mean, there was, uh, uh, I, uh, you know, I'm, I don't know how you missed it. Uh, our agency went to great efforts to, well, to widely publicize it, meet with the Dog Hunters Association, uh, explain everything. I mean, we did that multiple times. Now, Lonnie, you, who did you talk? Lonnie, who did you talk to in Jackson? You said somebody, a law enforcement officer named Smith. Right, a Smith. I don't know who his name was, but he was a Smith. Well, what did he say? He told us that he was going to have to talk. He didn't know that he would have to talk to the game wardens that was working in that area down there, and he would get back to us. He did call us back, and we didn't get any more information from him when he called back than we did the first time. Well, let, well, let me ask Lane while I got him. Kurt, thank you for coming on, Lane. Has it been much complaint about it? It's about over, Lane. How's that thing worked? Well, uh, Paul, I, I can tell you it's worked very well. Uh, our, our agencies received a lot of... Uh, you know, of course, the landowners are, are, are extremely happy about it, and I can tell you that there's having worked at some myself, and 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 I stay in close contact with the officers from that area. Uh, a lot of the dog hunters, the dog hunting groups, uh, didn't mind the thing at all. I mean, they they are you know they told them that they they were telling us that it uh, helped them to keep up with their dogs better. Uh, you know, they, they really didn't have any problem with it. Okay, Lonnie, so... I mean, they're... Then I and when you look at our thing. violations, a lot of the, you know, the same groups had had some some violations, uh, you know, people from the same group that hunted together. There was a lot of groups that got no violations. Paul. Okay. Uh, they did uh, great. Uh, all right, well, look, Lonnie, your complaint is because you, you felt like you didn't know anything about it. Did you have any problems with the, with the procedure, the way it went? Let, let, let me speak again a little more. Go ahead. The, the, the ruling is the first time you get caught is a warning. The second time your dog gets caught on private land, you're uh, forbid from turning your dog to loose in the forest for 20 days. Uh, all right, wait, let, me, let me stop you right there now, okay? Go ahead. So any, any violation of that law is... A, a citable offense. I mean, it's a criminal offense to violate any law, including that one. Now, on the first time that you get caught violating that particular law, you're you're issued a citation, but it does not. It, it, you don't. You're not barred from hunting in the national forest with dogs. Only on the second can, can are you actually can barred, or you are correct for twenty days. But I mean, can any I violation that? of that law is. I mean, you're going to get cited first time or fifth time. Can I okay, I mean, that? there's a lot of people. Uh, yeah, hold on, Lonnie. Okay, okay, what do you want to say to Lane about it? Go ahead, Lonnie. Yeah, I, the, what I'm telling you was on the cover sheet to the application for the permit 
that we had to get to run dogs. Now, what I'm telling you is on the front of the cover sheet. I understand that, but that up. warning has nothing to do with you being charged by an officer. That warning is has to do with you being barred from hunting in the national forest. Okay, that that is what that's about. It's not about the first time we catch you; is we're just going to warn you. No, no, so that that has to do with the with you being barred from hunting in the national forest. That's that's what okay? I see. That's what I see. So what's right, that, that is correct. All right. Okay. Now we never got caught, but twice. Never got a ticket, neither time. Okay. Excellent. 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 After dog season was over with, the end of January, the two men that owned the dogs that were caught on private property got a summons for court in Franklin County that says we broke the rules of the National Forest Dog Hunting Program and we can send them $151 and pay this and be done with it, or we can show up down there on the eighth day of March for court. Okay. Now, now, I, now what that is is a, a a private landowner has went and signed an affidavit against, uh, uh, I guess, uh, one of the people in your group, uh, and and he signed the affidavit against y'all for y'all's dogs coming on his property. See, our officers only charge. With, we, we only charge and would write you a ticket is, is, is if we were there. We can only do that in cases where our officers are there and we witness the dog. There it is. Okay? Now, on cases to where our officers are on the Mississippi River or in another county and a landowner catches a, a dog on his property that's that's got the club number or information on it, within well, that, that landowner has to go sign the affidavit at Justice Court which actually puts the charges on them. And that sounds like that's what's happened there. You've had a landowner sign the affidavit, then the courts will issue a summons to that person to appear in court, or he can plead guilty if that's what he wants to do. Okay, uh, Lane, that, yes, Okay, we got thank you for coming on, Lane. Uh, we got to move on. I appreciate it very much, Lane. Call any time, Paul. Uh, okay. And, uh, uh, I uh, thank you. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Lane, Lane. I appreciate that. That was a little out of my area there. Yeah, I know, Clark. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's, it's been a good thing, old Paul. I have to say. Well, I'll tell you, I, I work in the headquarters a lot too, just like you do, and and I've got no complaints whatsoever from anybody about it.